A lot of places in the world have been left unexplored. When someone does venture into an isolated place, they occasionally stumble upon the most interesting and amazing things. In this video, we'll take a look at the most astounding things people have found in the unlikeliest places. From an abandoned village to mysterious concrete arrows, here are the 15 most incredible discoveries found in the middle of nowhere. Number 15. A Town Frozen in Time The town of Bodie, California was a big community. In its heyday, it had a population of nearly 10,000 people. The town became an attractive location to settle down because of the gold rush. Everyone wanted to get their hands on the precious metal they could mine nearby. The entire town used to be bustling with life, but today, it's the complete opposite. It still sits east of Highway 395 on the east side of California Sierra Nevada mountains, but there's a stark difference between its first establishment and its state today. Everything in town came to a complete halt when its settlers decided to abandon it, seeing no point in staying because the gold had already run out. In 1962, the town was named the Bodie State Historic Park, and ever since, the entire town was in a standstill. Its streets remain deserted, and walking around the area will surely remind anyone of a Hollywood set. Rusty iron machinery lay in establishments undisturbed, old car skeletons, and wooden houses that are slowly crumbling away. Although Bodie has been considered a ghost town for more than six decades, some people still choose to visit the site to appreciate its beauty. Many claim that exploring the site felt like going back in time. One of the most popular attractions in the area is an old Methodist church that was originally built in 1882. Despite several fires, it remains standing to this day. However, there is something you should remember if you dare venture into the deserted town. Several guests tried stealing small things from the state park, and they've come to regret it. No one knows why but it seems like anyone who dares steal anything from the town will suffer from a nasty curse. Beware. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 14. Power Plant Dystopia In a small neighborhood in Charleroi, Belgium, lies something that looks out of this world. The vast, empty area looks like a massive establishment designed for a dystopian film. It is known as Power Plant IM. It was built in 1921, and its completion was considered a significant achievement. It became one of the largest coal-burning power plants in the country, and more than 50 years later, it remained the main source of energy for Charleroi and its surrounding communities. Over the next decades, the plant was upgraded to ensure its long life. However, its demise was inevitable. Despite its functionality and its capability of providing energy to multiple communities, it was incredibly harmful to the country. Power Plant IM emitted 10% of the country's total carbon dioxide emissions, and so people began protesting against its operations. By 2007, the power plant was forcibly closed. Opportunistic looters immediately flocked to the abandoned power plant to get metal and other valuable materials. All that's left today is the massive dome, which is mostly covered with green moss. Because of its futuristic dystopian appearance, it remained popular among urban explorers. In the past several years, the doors of the power plant have been closed occasionally, and in 2020, the power plant's doors were permanently closed to the public. It might not be long until this dystopian-looking attraction is destroyed. Number 13. Two-Headed Goat Janus was a young baby goat that was born on Nueska Farms in Wittenberg, Germany. However, unlike other young goats, Janus was special. Shortly after their goat gave birth, the caretakers immediately noticed that the kid was quite different. What they thought were two baby goats was actually a single goat with two heads. Needless to say, the people who saw the young animal were incredibly shocked. It was then that the two-headed goat was named after Janus, a Roman god who was often depicted with two faces. Usually, young goats born with the same condition as Janus aren't able to survive gestation, much less their births. But surprisingly, the two-headed goat appeared healthy. It was no wonder that the young goat quickly became popular on the internet. While some found the animal creepy, the majority of online viewers thought that the two-headed creature was cute and adorable. Janos caretakers believed that he would survive, but it became apparent that the young kid had difficulties that weren't present in his other siblings. Janos couldn't stand and control his legs minutes after being born, unlike normal newborn goats. His caretakers anticipated it, though. 
After all, Janus had two heads and two brains fighting to control a single body. With the help of his carers, the young kid underwent therapy and began making progress walking and controlling his legs. Of course, everyone on the internet was there to see the baby goat's progress. Unfortunately, within the same year, Janus was found lying almost lifelessly. He had no appetite, and as the day progressed, his temperature dropped lower and lower. He perished that very same day. Number 12. Car Graveyard When the war ended, U.S. soldiers who were stationed in Belgium were given the go signal to go back to their home country. Over their years of service, some of the soldiers acquired properties across Europe. Land was something they could own and secure despite returning to the United States. But their cars and other properties were something different. Now, it's still unknown how these soldiers managed to buy cars in the first place, but they somehow did. When they were advised to return, they couldn't bring the vehicles back to the United States because it was far too expensive and they couldn't really stick around to sell the vehicles. Instead, one of them had the idea of parking the cars on an isolated hill. After seeing a car in the woods, another had the same idea, until the location became a car graveyard. After noticing the abundance of cars in the area, collectors and looters took everything that they could from the parked vehicles. It came to a point where only the shells of the cars remained. Today, the exterior of several vehicles remain, now covered with rust and moss. Number 11. Neanderthal Flute In the cave of Divya Babe in Slovenia, archaeologists discovered what is now known as the oldest musical instrument in the world. The bone flute was discovered in an area that was once used as a hearth by Neanderthals. Although only a small portion of the 50,000-year-old instrument remains intact, it was still considered an important piece of history. It provides evidence that we've been making music since tens of thousands of years ago. Because of the discovery, archaeologists were also able to create a clay replica of the 50,000-year-old instrument and play modern music using it. It was incredibly surprising that despite dating back thousands of millennia, the instruments were refined and capable of playing notes on today's musical scale. Number 10. Mount Sel Sea Forts In the waters of Thames Estuary are several decaying forts sticking out of the water. These rust-covered establishments, which resemble dystopian and sci-fi buildings, were once anti-aircraft tower forts that were built in the early 1940s, at the height of World War II. The decaying establishments were once part of the Thames Estuary Defense Network, but their time was short-lived. In the 1950s, they were decommissioned, and years later, they were damaged by a storm. Instead of completely scrapping them, they were transported to the water where they stick out like nasty reminders of the bloody battles that occurred in the Second World War. Although everyone is free to spectate the establishments from afar, the authorities are against people visiting and entering the establishments, as they could fall apart anytime soon. Number 9. Girl Pulls 1,500-Year-Old Sword from a Lake You've probably explored a lot of places as a kid. After all, the curiosity of a child knows no bounds. But not all of us had the opportunity to discover something awesome while having our own imagined adventure. That's why a young 8-year-old girl most likely still remembers the exact moment when she pulled out an entire sword from the Vidostern Lake in Jönköping County, Sweden. The young girl, named Saga, was on summer vacation with her family when she suddenly stumbled upon a strange metal object covered with rust and other debris. At the time, the water of the lake was extremely low, which enabled her to see the strange object. She immediately noticed the handle and lifted it out of the water. Delighted, she called for her dad, who confirmed that she pulled a sword out of the lake. But it wasn't the most exciting part of her discovery. Aside from the very cool action of fishing the sword out of the lake, the object also had historical significance. Contrary to her father's initial suspicion, the sword was actually an ancient relic that was forged around 1,000 years ago, maybe even more. Saga's discovery compelled authorities to excavate at the site, and they also discovered a brooch from the 3rd century. The cool part? It's the fact that after her story was featured on the news, locals began calling her queen. Now that's a core memory right there. That kid will most definitely remember that cool moment for the rest of her life. Who knows? It might even inspire her to someday become an archaeologist. Number 8. Remains of Marsem Fim Marsem Fim, which literally translates to Endless Sea, was a 76-foot Brazilian research vessel. It was used until April 2012, 
and its last mission was to traverse the Antarctic waters. However, during one of its explorations, Mars Fim encountered a problem. The crew ran into difficulties when the vessel hit the ice in Maxwell Bay in Ardley Cove. It wasn't a serious problem until the weather turned worse. Forty knots of wind effectively stopped the vessel from advancing any further. Along with the waves, the crew on board knew that it was too late to salvage the ship. The ship was left behind by its passengers, who were rescued and transported to the nearest safe facility. Many of them were rescued just before they succumbed to the freezing environment of the Antarctic. The vessel, however, slowly sank. After it froze over, the vessel split in half after the hull expanded. And so today, the vessel is trapped and cased in ice. What's astounding is the fact that it's in an icy chamber that's shallow enough to be observed by anyone walking on the surface. In early 2013, volunteers finally freed the research vessel from its icy cage by attaching buoys to lift it. Once the vessel was lifted to the surface of the water, it was pulled to the nearby shore where researchers salvaged what they could. Fortunately for them, Mars Fim was insured for a staggering $700,000, but because of its current state, the vessel is beyond repair, and it never had the chance to sail once again. Number 7. Christ of the Abyss 17 meters under the waters of San Fruttuoso, Italy, is a massive bronze statue that was placed in the area in August of 1954. This eerie statue depicts Christ with his arms raised, seemingly reaching up to the surface. This divine figure remains to be different from others because of its unique location. Moreover, it's incredibly significant for the locals, as it was placed in the water as an honor to Dario Gonzet, an Italian pioneer for scuba diving gear. Today, there are two other similar statues in the world. The one in the waters of Italy was the original one, and it was sculpted by Guido Galetti. It was taken out of the water after years of being covered with debris and crustaceans to be restored. The same year, it was returned to its original location where it remains to this day. In 2018, it was cleaned to maintain its state. The second bronze statue was created and placed on the coastline of Granada. It was cast from the same mold as the original Christ of the Abyss sculpture in Italy. Finally, the third structure was placed in the waters of the United States, off the coast of Key Largo, Florida. Number 6. Abandoned Japanese Amusement Park A colorful Ferris wheel and a dusty weathered carousel are only two of the attractions left behind at the eerie site of Kijinuma Leisure Land in Osaki, Miyagi Prefecture in Japan. The entire amusement park is a staggering 110,000 square meters, and yet, more than 20 years ago, it was left abandoned by its owner due to financial problems. However, it wasn't officially marked as closed. Today, only urban explorers and those into dark tourism visit the area. Despite being left abandoned for over two decades, the Ferris wheel and carousel are both in relatively good condition. In Japan, several people are into Haikyo, the equivalent of urban exploration in the country. It quickly became a favorite for tourists and photographers alike because of its picturesque and rather creepy vibe. It was said that the owner tried to reopen the amusement park, but because the attractions that were corroded and some of its mechanics were eaten by rust after lack of maintenance, he found it too hopeless. Several people wonder why the amusement park still stands today, despite it not being operational for the past few decades. But perhaps, there is something that attracts people to these ruins. There is something hauntingly beautiful in exploring these abandoned and decrepit sites. Number 5. Chicken Church Perched on a hill on the island of Java, Indonesia, is a strange establishment that confuses everyone who sees it. Several miles from the world's largest Buddhist monument is yet another strange structure. This is the Chicken Church. It's literally a massive chicken-shaped temple complete with an open beak and a gleaming white crown. Who wouldn't be impressed by this establishment? This ancient temple was shrouded with controversy in the past. Its design led many to believe that it was created by Dutch colonists. However, others refused to believe this claim, and instead proposed that the chicken was a haunted establishment that was established by vampiric demons from Indonesian lore. But as it turned out, these theories were all wrong. Contrary to popular belief, the church was built by a Christian believer. The chicken church was created by a man named Daniel Alamsja. The establishment is neither haunted nor left behind by Dutch colonists. Daniel is a man in his 70s, and he built the church after receiving a vision of a dove resting on top of a hill. 
Of course, the man didn't immediately create the church because of a strange dream. But when he visited one of his employees and saw the exact same hill in his dream, he realized that he was indeed given a mission. Over the next month, he spent thousands of dollars to buy the rights to the land and erect the church. Unfortunately, instead of a dove, many people thought that the church was in the shape of a chicken. Well, that's probably quite disappointing for Daniel. But what's important is the fact that many appreciate the establishment he built. And now, it's time for today's topic. This farmer discovered something weird under his cornfield. It was a normal day when a farmer heard strange noises coming from the middle of the field. Curious, he ventured into the tall grass and discovered what looked like a piglet. But when he looked closely, he realized that the animal didn't look normal. Instead, it looked like a hybrid of a pig and a human. The abominable creature was still alive and kicking when the farmer decided to bring it to a shed. Unfortunately, the creature died a few minutes later. However, he did manage to take a photo to intrigue everyone on the internet. There are some speculations that the entire thing was a hoax and that the animal was CGI. There are also people who believe that the animal was a cursed creature because of its strange appearance. What are your thoughts on this? As always, comment down below with the hashtag today's topic and let us know your opinion about what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 4. Great Train Graveyard for locomotive enthusiasts and history lovers out there, stumbling upon a train graveyard must be something out of a dream. If you ever find yourself wandering around Uyuni, Bolivia, you just might get the chance to take a look at trains that stood the test of time. Known as the Great Train Graveyard, this isolated area in Uyuni was once considered an important transportation hub in South America. But after problems around the territory, it lost the attention of investors and developers. Trains in the area were left to rust, and they remained forgotten for years. Ironically, more people began paying attention to the locomotives after they lost their functionality. Today, people who find themselves around the area climb up the rusted shells of the trains and appreciate the historical remains. More than 100 train cars, each with its own history, can be found in the locomotive graveyard. Number 3. The Leper Island on an island located in the Gulf of Alaunda, northeastern Crete is a settlement that was created solely for outcasts. Spinalonia wasn't always a land separated from the peninsula of Alaunda, but to protect the port of ancient Aulus, which rose in reputation because of its salt pans, it was deliberately separated from the rest of the land. Spinalonia became among the most formidable fortresses in the Mediterranean until it was converted into something else. Beginning 1903, Spinalonia was seen as a good place to isolate lepers from the rest of the communities in Europe. In the past, leprosy was an incredibly stigmatized disease, and anyone who contracted it was automatically considered an outcast. No one wanted anything to do with them, and the sickness was practically incurable. From 1903 to 1957, Spinalonia was converted into a leper colony and remained one of the last leper colonies in Europe. During the peak of the illness, the island became the home of more than 400 lepers. The disease on its own was horrifying. It was only expected that terrifying things occurred in the community when people battling with the disease were abandoned. People in the community were as good as dead. They didn't have enough food or water while residing on the island. Doctors were also known to be incredibly ignorant at the time. In March 1936, people living on the island found hope in the form of a student in Athens Law School named Epaminondas. At the age of 21, he was exiled after getting leprosy. But instead of stepping down, he began fighting for better conditions for patients similar to him. Many kind-hearted and compassionate people visited the island despite not having leprosy. But in the end, the bad was still overpowered by the good. Today, Spinalonia is still known as the Grave of the Living and one of the most magnificent archaeological sites of Crete. Number 2. Oasis of Mosquitoes Bees are insects that many people are scared of. However, many of us recognize their importance to the environment. They're among the most important pollinators, and without them, plants and trees wouldn't be able to spread. What's more, they also produce incredibly delicious honey. Mosquitoes are also insects that a lot of people are scared of. They bring disease, and if they're in the mood, they will buzz in your ear while you're trying to sleep all night long. Needless to say, these creatures are pretty annoying. Unlike bees, no one would probably care if mosquitoes disappear on Earth. Mosquitoes are among the deadliest creatures on Earth, 
and they're the culprit behind many deadly diseases. These insects are responsible for malaria, which kill about 429,000 people in a single year. What's more, nearly half of the entire planet's population is at risk of getting infected by a sickness brought on by these small insects. And so many travelers were quite pleased upon discovering Wawanamus. It's an extinct volcanic crater in one of the most isolated places in Libya, covering an area that's about 4 kilometers wide and surrounded by a massive deposit of ash. This volcanic crater is a hot spot for tens of thousands of mosquitoes. It's quite a sight to see, and it's a place that you wouldn't want to visit. Number 1. Mysterious Giant Concrete Arrows Imagine walking around an unfamiliar area and suddenly seeing giant arrows on the ground. This was the bewildering experience of several people who chanced upon massive concrete arrows in the middle of nowhere in Utah. So what's up with these confusing arrows? In the 1900s, we didn't have the same technology that we have today. Back then, navigation systems weren't as refined and sophisticated as they are today. And so, people flying across the country needed simpler and more practical tools to help them fly in the right direction. It was only practical to use giant concrete arrows that pilots and navigators could see from hundreds of feet above ground. Admittedly, there were a couple of problems with the strange navigation system. The arrows were incredibly unusable in the middle of the night, and most pilots remained thousands of feet above the ground, making these concrete arrows hard to see clearly during the day. These arrows obviously became obsolete and unusable after the invention of modern navigating systems, but some of them still exist to this day. However, people found it pointless to clean them up and make sure they were not covered with grass or bushes. So many of these arrows are now covered in tall grass and are barely visible. But if you look around Google Maps, you might notice several strange arrows that seemingly point to nowhere. Now you know what these bizarre things are. There might be more of these interesting discoveries out there, so keep your eyes open. Who knows, you might stumble upon something interesting one day. In fact, you might already have. If you have a similar experience, make sure to share it in the comments down below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on the screen right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everybody.